A summer ago, I was on a 40-hour train trip from Chicago to Los Angeles, listening to podcasts and trying to drift off to sleep. I generally love trains. It feels safer than a car, safer than a plane. It's on a track, speeding into the horizon, set on a very specific path that it doesn't deviate from. I used to feel secure in my seat as the sound of the tracks became white noise and I could just focus on the window. There's something comfortingly archaic about long train rides, even though this one was very much updated, with aeroplane-ass doors equipped with a large window showing the hallway. So, as I sat there in my room mat, listening to the buzzing voices in my headphones, I felt myself being slowly lulled into sleep, pulled into an exhausted trance. Everything became black. I must have fallen asleep a touch before I should have, because I awoke to a minimal amount of light. Checking my phone, it was only 1 a.m. Crap. Something about the air felt different. Everything felt vaguely surreal, like I was experiencing something I shouldn't. You know, how semi lucid dreams feel. When you feel like you're onto something, but you don't quite get it. Like your environment is trying to tell you something. That's how the train felt. I was alone, so... I decided to turn to my phone to pass the time until I felt tired enough to fall asleep again, scrolling through the downloaded movies I had prepared. I tapped on one and leaned into the corner of the seat for comfort. I always had a habit of keeping one headphone out so I could hear my surroundings if there was an emergency or someone knocking at my door. After about 10 minutes had passed, I heard soft footsteps coming down the train from the rear. I perked up and listened for a second, but they seemed to stop as quickly as they started. The landscape outside screamed past as I resumed the movie in my quiet little room. I started feeling comfortable again, and the strange feeling I woke up to slowly sank away. I liked the fact that almost everyone was asleep, enjoying the pristinely quiet night. Until the footsteps shuffled closer to my end of the train again, this time moving slower and a little louder. I ignored them this time, continuing to focus on my phone. Only when the footsteps were nearing my door, did I realize how unsettling the uncovered window on my door was. When I finally stood up to drop the curtain, a woman was staring back at me from the hallway. She was almost as tall as me, with startly pale skin and long black hair draped over her shoulders. She was absolutely beautiful. I felt myself frozen in place as she stared at me with a kind look in the dark eyes, lips curled into a tiny smile. She must have been a little older than me. Her hand rose slightly to wave at me through the glass, beckoning me to open the door, and I did. Hello, is there something wrong? I asked her quietly. There's an awful smell in my room. It's from under the seat. I need a place to wait until morning. I was very confused, and it must have shown. I think I've seen you before. That's why I came here. Can I sit with you? She spoke in a short, direct sentences in a feminine, calm, and reassuring tone. My mind was spinning from the strange circumstances, combined with that feeling again. That trance-like state that made everything seem a little less genuine. Y yeah no don't worry, you can wait here. I sputtered before she stepped inside with no hesitation. 
You know who I am, don't you? She rhetorically asked. From the station. We talked, right? We both sat down as I processed her question, right before she took her place next to me. At that moment, I started to believe we really did talk before the train departed. She had such an unforgettable face, the sharpest cheekbones, the most deep brown, almost black eyes. My heart started to speed up as I felt blood rush to the surface of my skin. Nervousness and calm, vying for dominance. No, I'm sure we did. What was your name again? She smiled, with teeth this time. You remember me. Don't be silly. I thought you were cute. I always did. Oh, well, you're... I nervously laughed, but I started to feel my ability to talk diminish. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I just... I just woke up. It's okay. She reassured me. She reached over to the curtain and pulled it down, covering the window. It's me. A wave of relaxation overtook my senses again as I started to lose track of my thoughts. I started to feel like I was dreaming again. As if I could do or say anything and it wouldn't matter. The only thing occupying my mind was this woman. I blinked. And somehow, I was laying on my side. My head resting in her lap. What was happening? Did I just pass out? I tried to sit up, but I couldn't move. It was as if an invisible weight was keeping me in this position. But there was absolutely nothing there. You know, David, I'm so glad there was something wrong with my room. I may have never had a chance to be with you like this. I felt her hand stroking my hair. Yes, my eyes started to feel gradually heavier. I know you lack experience. It's alright. Her hand continued down to my neck, softly stroking it. Her hand gently closed around the side of my neck as she softly cooed. David, sweetheart. Her voice started to echo, swirling around inside my mind. As everything felt more like a dream, I felt less and less uncomfortable. The hand around my neck started to feel different, shifting as it slid around to my throat. The skin started to crawl with something, like tiny little insects squirming around under the surface. A leathery, large hand started to place pressure against my throat as I started to realize how paralyzed I truly was. Life is just so delicate. Her voice remained the same, but I was beginning to resurface from the depths of whatever state of mind I was trapped in. My heart thrashed in my chest, now from fear instead of nervousness. Inside my mind, I was begging, please, please, please let me move. I need to get up, please. You can't spend it alone. It was as if I was nearing the end of a tunnel, like I was so close to breaking free from my condition, but I still wasn't back to normalcy. The hand continued to press down on my throat like an unforgiving vice, and I could feel myself losing oxygen. I can't spend it alone. We could be so happy. The other hand closed around my throat as well, applying more and more force as I began to see stars. That was the last I heard before I sunk into unconsciousness, succumbing to the lack of air. I woke up on the floor of my room, drenched in sweat and gasping for air. It was light outside now and a persistent rapping at the covered door forced me back to the present. My throat was throbbing, and I felt a stabbing pain in my chest. 
so I called the person outside of my room for help. My voice was hoarse and raspy, but at least I could speak. It turns out I was alright, safe for a strangely high fever that subsided very quickly. Now, it's almost summer again, and I had almost written off the event entirely until yesterday. When I got home from work, I found an envelope slit under my front door. When I opened it, I pulled out a scenic postcard from Los Angeles with a pen-scrolled message. Wish you were here. <laughs>